good morning dear students welcome to edustars online class you are watching class 4 science today we will see lesson 9 the changing weather this is part 2 before we start we have a small recap of part 1 cloudy rainy windy hot cold humid all these terms tell the different conditions of the atmosphere around us this is called the weather weather is the condition of the atmosphere of a place at a particular time the factors that determine weather are temperature wind air pressure moisture and clouds all these factors are related to one another next we will see the sun and the weather weather is the condition of the atmosphere of a place at a particular time it is not the same everywhere it might be a hot and sunny day where you live but in other part of the world it may cloudy or snowy also it may be sunny in the morning on your way to school but it may rain in the afternoon the sun causes the changes in weather the heat of the sun changes water from one form to another and also affects the movement of air these changes in water and air bring about changes in weather what causes day and night the earth moves on its own tilted axis this movement is called rotation it takes 24 hours for the earth to complete one rotation at any given time the part of the earth that faces the sun receives light and thus has day whereas the other part of that earth is away from the sun does not receive light and has night hence the rotation of the earth causes day and night why do we have seasons the earth moves around the sun in its own orbit this movement is called revolution it takes 365 days and 6 hours for the earth to complete one revolution as the earth is tilted on its axis the portion of the earth facing the sun has longer and warmer days so this portion has summer season the portion of the earth away from the sun and cooler and shorter days this portion has winter season therefore the revolution of the earth causes changes in weather do you understand the difference between rotation and revolution the rotation of the earth causes day and night the revolution of the earth causes changes in seasons next we will learn about how do winds blow due to the round shape of the earth sun rays do not fall evenly at all places when a part of the earth's surface gets heated up the air above it become warm the warm and lighter air rises up in turns the cool air which is heavier comes in to take its place this leads to continuous movement of air that causes wind the next one is air air is all around us all living things need air to breathe air is a mixture of many gases it contains nitrogen oxygen carbon dioxide water vapor and dust particles a blanket of air around the earth is called atmosphere when air moves it is called wind and the strong wind is called gale 
wind that blows gently and lightly is called breeze a very strong wind is called storm when storm occurs with lightning and thunder it is called thunderstorm wind also disordered the weather of a place if we go to the sea shore on a hot and sunny day we will find the sand on the shore very hot and the sea water cool this happens because land gets heated up faster than water it also cools down faster than water this difference gives rise to sea water sea breeze and land breeze let us learn how sea breeze during the day land gets heated up much faster than the water in sea as the land becomes hot it heats the air above it this hot air rises up and cool air from the sea blows towards the land to takes its place this wind that blows from the sea towards the land during the day is called sea breeze at night land cools down much faster than the sea as a result the air above the land also cools down the air above the sea is still warmer this warm air rises up and the cool air from the land rushes towards the sea to takes its place this wind that blows from land towards the sea at night is called land breeze the next one is water water is the one of the basic necessities of life nearly 3/4 of the earth's surface is covered by water human beings plants and animals all need water to live water exists in three different forms that is gas solid and liquid for example ice water and water vapor water changes from one form to another on heating or cooling let us learn more about water first one is evaporation the process in which water changes into water vapor on heating is called evaporation we have learned that water is also present in the atmosphere in the form of water vapor the amount of water vapor present in the atmosphere is known as humidity when the weather is very hot more water gets evaporated which makes the weather humid the rate of the evaporation depends on the following factors wind speed heat surface area and humidity the next one is condensation when we boil water in a container covered with a lid we see tiny droplets of water on the inner side of the lid the tiny droplets of water are formed due to changes of water vapor into water the process by which water vapor changes into water on cooling is called condensation water vapor rises in the air and condenses to form droplets of water which in turns from clouds water vapor condenses to form dew fog frost hail snow and rain first we will see dew on cold morning water vapor condenses on the surface of the leaves and grass in the form of drops or called dew drops fog in winter season when it is very cold water vapor condenses on the dust particles to form thick clouds of tiny droplets just above the land or water this is called fog frost when it is very cold dew drops freeze to form crystal of ice this is called frost hail when rain drops passes 
Through a very cold region of the atmosphere, they freeze to form pellets of ice. These pellets of ice are called hail, fall to the ground. Snow in extremely cold weather, water vapor condenses to form snow instead of water droplets. Rain when water vapor condenses and falls to the ground in the form of drops of water, it is called rain. So today we will see about water cycle. The process of evaporation and condensation are going on continuously in the nature. Water evaporates from the water bodies due to the sun's heat. It then rises up and condenses to form tiny droplets of water. These tiny droplets of water together form clouds. Inside clouds, these droplets become bigger. When the droplets of water become too heavy to remain afloat in the air, they fall down as a rain or snow. The rain water flows back to the water bodies. This continuous process is called water cycle. Purification of water. We should drink clean water. The water in wells, rivers and ponds contains soluble impurities and insoluble impurities and germs making it unfit to for drinking. Soluble impurities or impurities like salt that dissolve in water and cannot be seen. Insoluble impurities or impurities that can be seen as they do not dissolve in water, example bubbles. The impurities present in water can make us fall sick. Water can be purified by various methods. Some of them are given sedimentation and decantation, filtration, boiling and chlorination. Let us learn one by one. The first process is sedimentation. In this process, water is allowed to stand for some time in a container. All the mud and insoluble impurities settle down at the bottom of the container. The process in which insoluble impurities settle down is called sedimentation. Now, the water is gently poured out in another container is called without disturbing the settled impurities. The process by which water is gently poured out to another container after sedimentation is called decantation. The water we get after decantation is not very clean as it may still contain very fine impurities. So, we can use the filtration method. Filtration, it is another method of purifying water. In this process, water is passed through a filter paper. Filter paper allows water to flow through it but not impurities. The impurities are left behind on the filter paper and clean water is collected in a container below. Decontated water can also be filtered to remove impurities. The next method is boiling. It is the simplest way to purify water. The filtered water may contain germs which can make us fall sick. Boiling water kills the germs present in it. The next one is chlorination. Chlorination, germs present in water can also be killed by adding chlorine. Chlorination is the process by which chlorine is added to water in order to kill germs present in it. Chlorine tablet are easily available in the market. We can also purify water by using water filters like Aquagod or Orvo at home. 
Next, we will see about underground water. When rain falls, a part of it of it seeps through the ground and passes through the different layer of soil till it reaches the rocky layer. Since it cannot seep through this layer, it gets collected here. This water is called underground water. A large amount of water can be stored under the ground. The level of underground water in a particular area is called water table. The water table differ from place to place. It may be high or low. According to the season, in summer water evaporates more. So the water table is low. In the rainy season, water collects below the soil and less evaporation takes place. Hence, water table becomes high. Underground water can be taken out by digging wells and tube wells. The next one is water conservation. The wise and judicious use of water is called water conservation. We should avoid wastage of water by using the following steps. Get leaking tape repaired. Do not leave the tape running while brushing your teeth or washing. If you have water left in your water bottle, pour it in a potted plant. Keep water in clean and covered vessels. Water in which vegetables and fruits are washed can be used to water plants. Water is precious. Each drop must be used wisely. So we have to save water. What we have learned today? Water cycle. The change of water into water vapor and back into water in nature is called water cycle. Evaporation. The changes of water to water vapor. Condensation. The changes of water vapor into water. Soluble impurities, impurities that dissolve in water. Insoluble impurities, impurities that do not dissolve in water. Filtration, the process by which water is cleaned by passing it through a filter paper is called filtration. Thank you students. Have a good day.